Yeah, four years. Hi guys, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sam McMahon. I'm a fifth year aerospace engineering major here at UB. Um, from East Aurora, New York, so Buffalo native. I'll get going on my SA experience a little bit. I started out as office personnel, so it's a lot of time in the office, seeing people's faces, kind of doing day-to-day -day administrative things. Um, after that, I moved up. I worked as an event staff lieutenant last year for Springfest and for Bob Dylan. So that's organizing the clubs who volunteer and get paid to do like kind of security stuff and making sure everybody's where they need to be throughout the event. Uh, this summer, I was the only student who was full-time paid office staff in the student association. So I worked closely with pro staff, the e-board. Um, Aaron Lachelle, the entertainment director, was around for a while. Same with Jen Merkel, chief of staff. I worked on a lot of projects there. I was in finance for over a month. Um, I had some experience in student involvement, student affairs. I helped plan uh, SA freshman orientation, so the club fair that we had. I helped plan staff orientation. Um, pretty much every major event this year, I've had some kind of hand in. I know what's going on with, so good experience there. Now I'm senior office manager, so that and like that's in charge of scheduling receptionists, kind of day-to-day -day office stuff, uh, and then event staff manager too. So that's kind of like a step up from event staff lieutenant, where now I'm actually in charge of asking which clubs want to volunteer, putting together the contracts for them to volunteer, and uh, actually I shouldn't say volunteer, they get paid, but um, that counts towards their fundraising and some essay participation that's required on their part. Um, but yeah, okay, so a little bit about my platform. There's six major points. Um, two are just good essay administrative things that I really want to work on. Uh, three are points for clubs, which are important because that's kind of like the backbone of our student outreach and student involvement arm. And then one is just a general student involvement point for all students who pay 94.75 here. So the first point is teamwork. And I know that sounds kind of generic, but right now we've had a lot of issues with people not communicating well in the office, people not working together, and it's because everyone's not on the same page. So anywhere I've ever worked, we usually have at least one meeting a week where everybody sits down, at least on a director level, and talks about what the goals are for the week, what the events are for the week, what's going to happen. So even if it's only 15 minutes, the beginning of every week, I want to sit down with all the directors, everybody who has a management role in SA, and make sure they all know what each other have going on throughout the week. So if one staff member from one department needs to talk to another, they know like who needs to go where, and we can just kind of get on the same page with all the goals and events and things that are going on. Uh, second point, I know given the current like light that we've been, that the student association has been shedding, this is really important. Uh, accountability and responsibility. Um, no matter whether you're the president or the receptionist, you have to play by the same rules. And I know it's a little harder for elected officials to be held accountable for the things they do, but I think that's really important. Uh, we started the staff evaluation program this year, which is kind of rocky, I think, in the first thing. So I think that kind of needs an overhaul. We've got some good capabilities to digitize that, make that a little more effective. And so we need to provide constructive criticism if people don't show up to work, if people aren't doing their job, if people are just being insubordinate in general. We need to sit down and have a discussion with them about how this is a real job. We're paying you for the time you're here it's important that you treat it like a real job. And then on the other hand, credit where credit is due. I mean, a lot lately I've seen e-boards in the past kind of slap their name on the side of projects that weren't theirs, and that kind of upsets me because I know that there are a lot of hardworking people in SA and in clubs who work to make these big events possible, and then they don't get credit for it. The e-board says, you're welcome, I gave that to you. And then you never hear from the, the event staff manager or the director of entertainment, or even like the sound tech who actually sat behind the soundboard the, other, the entire time and made the event possible. So it's important to kind of give credit to people who actually do things right and get positive reinforcement as well. Um, first point for clubs, uh, just generally educate them on what SA can provide for them because we're not, a lot of clubs just view us as like a piggy bank, like we're the ones who give them money or take money away from them, that's all we're there for and we're a pain. But that's, that's not it at all. We're there to help clubs succeed. Um, we've got all these great resources for them to use, our student involvement department, I mean we've got uh, videographers who will come videotape their events, photographers who will come out and document it. We've got uh, graphic artists on staff who will make banners for them, design quarter sheets, flyers, like anything they could want from a student involvement standpoint. They can go to our entertainment department, figure out how to do contracts if they want to hire a DJ or get sound equipment set up. Um, we provide all of that to them free of charge through the student association that's part of the deal with being a fully recognized club. So we need to educate them more on that. Um, second point, I've worked a lot on this over the summer, UB Linked. It's kind of a student life initiative that's been going on lately at the University of Buffalo. It's kind of been in play for about three years now. And the student association has been really hesitant to get on board to it, and I think it's because they haven't had proper training. I sat down with Jill Ricotta, and uh, she's kind of, yeah? One minute. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so anyway, student involvement um, through UB Link. There's a lot of opportunities for clubs to get more involved there. Um, they can fill out forms electronically. They can do card swipes to log into events and track attendance. Um, yeah, so really, really good opportunities there. I'm going to skip the last club point because the last point that I have for general students is really important to me because it's important whether you like are involved in an essay club or whether you go to Fall Fest, like Fall Fest and Spring Fest, the artist genres. It's really important that everybody's on the same page as far as like you, everyone pays 94.75, so they have a chance to they should have a chance to benefit from that equally. 
Um, I want to start doing holiday bus services back and forth. So like airport north, airport south campus, the day before and the day after breaks. I've already priced it out. It's extremely reasonable, and I think it's something that if we give a, like enough advance notice to, almost all students can benefit from, given the number of international students we have, uh, people who are from out of state, people from downstate, anybody who's basically not local to the Buffalo area or doesn't have a car could benefit from that. Also, I'd like to look into subsidizing cab rides for students. Like any cab ride under $100, I'd like to look at doing like a 10% off thing through a certain cab service when they show their UBID. I think that's a really good way, I mean, even students who are local in the area still, like every undergraduate student who goes to the school here, I think takes a cab at least one point in the four years they're here at school. So I think that those are two really important points to kind of cover students who will never join a club, will never like our fest genre, general student involvement. So, thank you guys. Thanks, sir. Yeah, no problem. All right, so we will open it up to questions. Uh, I'll ask the first one. One of the biggest problems in recent years with SA presidents has been making these promises and then not necessarily following through with them. Yeah. Uh, how can we know that you'll follow through with the bus plan and with the cab plan? Let me let me give you an example of the bus plan. I've already talked to it's Ridge Road who does our uh, bus service. They do Schuster's bus service. They do our staff orientation. They do our gala busing. Um, I think they they gave me a quote for what it would be, and it was somewhere in the four hundred four hundred dollar four hundred twenty dollar range for one bus running ten hours a day from both, uh, both shuttles back and forth to the airport from both campuses. Um, that's not that expensive, really, when you look at it. The president has a project line, which starts out at $2,000 right now. I think last time I checked it in SAFE was the beginning, end of last week. It's $1,750 right now. So that'll pay for at least this semester's worth of busing. And then that's just a good like general activity thing. So we could take that out of the general activity line, too, that comes from entertainment. So, I mean, that's like I have, I've talked to the people at the bus company. I have a concrete plan of where in the SA budget I can use to pay for it. Um, that's something I'd like to set up within my, like, within my first week in office because, I mean, the more advanced notice I give people too, they can book their flights, they can get cheaper flights, they know when the bus service is going to be provided. That's really important because if, if I like announce it the day before it happens, what's the point then? Nobody's going to know what's going on. Nobody's going to take advantage of it. It's important to have these programs but also market them properly and make sure students know how they can best use them. Um, the other promises, director of, um, director meetings weekly, that's something I've wanted to do for a while, and um, that's just something that I call. I just tell everybody, email all my directors, say, let's get on the same page, find a time Monday morning, we can all get in the office, even if it's for 15 minutes, talk about what's going on. Um, also, the cab service, I already talked, I had a meeting with Barbara Cotta a few weeks ago, um, talked to her for about an hour and a half, just about general projects that are going on, some of the stuff Student Affairs is working on, some of the stuff that uh, Student Life has got going on. And I brought up the cab idea to her, and she said, I need to go talk to the UB card office. They've already got a service who accepts campus cash right now. They'd probably be amenable to working out some kind of deal with this. And then on the end of how SA will pay for it, we'd have to set up some kind of a hard cap in the budget line where let's say we take 5000 or $7,000 a year. That's like our cab subsidization like line that we go to, and once that's out, it's out. So we have to be fiscally responsible with it. But at the same time, I mean, that's definitely something we could pull, again, from our general events line. Right now, that line is empty, but we're going to move the revenue from our small concert into that line. We're also going to move what we didn't spend. We underspent on Real Big Fish, so we've got money in that line we're going to put back into the general events line. Um, so, yeah, that I want to make sure that all, I checked with all these things first to make sure that they're, like, financially possible and that I can actually go through with the execution of them. So, Eric, you have a question? Uh, we wrote an editorial a couple weeks ago, right after Nick Johns resigned, about the level of autonomy that SA has. And we sort of recommended that you incorporate an advisory board of adults, of uh, business people, of faculty, of even elected officials to provide oversight and uh, even direction to some of your decisions. What's your response to that? And do you think that that might be something you're interested in initiating? Um, to be blunt, absolutely not, actually. And let, and let me tell you why. Um, I think that a 55-year-old can mismanage $3.6 million just as poorly as an 18-year-old can. Age has nothing to do with it. The level of autonomy right now is its something that provides students the freedom to be able to do worthwhile events and do things that they want. Once you incorporate kind of an advisory board into the mix, you kind of lose that level of like what student, like spending the students' money in the way that's actually beneficial to them. The biggest thing that we need to work on to kind of correct that issue is make sure the right people get elected. The people who are going to be accountable, responsible, the people who have experience. The, like the, the issue there isn't the lack of oversight, because there is oversight too. And every time there's been a scandal, the SA system has worked. I mean, the only, the only issue that everybody sees is that all our dirty laundry comes out every time, mostly because of you guys. <laughs> but um, yeah, but that's your job. That holds us accountable to another level too, because no matter what we do, if we screw up, you guys are there to say, hey, that's not right. The students should know about this. 
and so I mean between you guys we have Mike Lewis in student life who's basic his job as far as our expenditures is to look over everything that we're putting through our system in KBS and in SAFE and make sure that they're all legal everything they file state federal local laws they don't violate, violate any university policies so we have that level of oversight there already for purchases like that that's the reason the three hundred thousand dollar contract a few years ago never went through because Mike Lewis looked at it he said I didn't review this contract I don't know where this is going no and so the system works from that respect. I don't think we need more oversight. We just need to make sure the people who are qualified, the people who know what they're doing, get into office. I have a question. Yeah. You said you worked closely with the e-board over the summer. Yeah. You were the only full paid staff. Yeah. Right. Um, what did you see within the e-board that you would like to change when you come into office? Um, so. RP, the uh, Mark Sorrell, the pro staff member, kind of sat them down. I, I'm going to answer your question, but I'm going to kind of take the long way around. Um, he sat them down in the first week like he does with every e-board. I was actually behind the front desk when they were doing this. And he kind of gave them a roadmap of things that you want to avoid, things that have caused disconnects in e-boards in the past. And his biggest thing was everybody needs to be on the same page. Make sure that the e-board is always together. Nobody comes in and splits you apart. You don't start to have like little fissures in your relationship and things. You need to stay together and don't do like oh, he says, she said, mommy and daddy, where one club comes or somebody comes and talks to one and then you get a different answer from another. They have to stay connected and they have to stay together on everything. And I think that they really didn't. Because the, the biggest issue, and a lot of e boards who go south have this issue right off the bat, is staff hiring. Because the, executive, the president right now has total power of hire and fire. So he's, if he wants somebody to be on staff and the treasurer and the vice president say no, too bad, they're on staff. So that's kind of like the first sticking point that a lot of e-boards run into. And that was I was in the hiring meeting. I was at the director's when everybody sat down and said, we like these applicants. We don't like these people. We've seen this person work really hard. We'd like to see them in this position. And a lot of those recommendations got ignored by Nick Johns. And that was the first sticking point between the directors and between the other e-board members. And that kind of like ignited. That just got the ball rolling and things. And it came down to like whenever he was going to make a decision, it got really controversial because everybody like, well, we want to do this. Maybe we should look at doing that. And it would always be, no, I'm the president. We're going to do this. And that's wrong. I mean, even just because you have that power doesn't mean you should exercise it on a regular basis. It's really important to take time to listen to everyone else's opinion, especially, especially Sid and Lyle. Because if I get elected, I'll have to work with them every day. And like, no, if, we're, if we're fighting, we're on a different page. We, we still have to work together. Our signatures still have to go on the same sheet of paper. So it's important to stay together on that. And that's kind of like some of the issues that I saw. The biggest thing was the communication. You mentioned that you're not necessarily interested in more oversight, but on Lisa's talking point, you did mention that you were considering a change to the hiring uh, procedure because there's so much power in the presidency. What yeah. was that? Well, that's like more of an internal oversight thing. That's not like an outside advisory board coming in. My proposal was that it's a two-thirds majority hire and fire on the e-board. So to hire or fire anybody in the SA staff, you have to have either president, VP, president, treasurer, VP, treasurer signature on a piece of paper for that to happen. And I think that kind of hopefully will assuage some level of issues we've had in the staff hiring process in the past where like the president's more willing to play ball and work with the other e-board members even if there's a split between them because they need both signatures and they have to be on the same page for it to happen. So I'm hoping that kind of incorporates a little bit more I don't know, cohesiveness between the e-board members. I have a question. Yeah. How did you get involved with SA? Why didn't you run for president in the past and why did you see this opportunity and decide to go for it? Um, I'll be perfectly honest. I don't think I was qualified in the past. I didn't have the experience I had over the summer. I think that my summer experience was really like the reason why I'm in the perfect position to take over right now. Um, in the past, I never really had any interest in politics either, like so to speak. I just kind of made friends with people because I liked them and they were, they were in my major or I wanted to hang out. I never went out and made these club connections, these political connections with people just because like oh, someday I want to be essay president. That's not the kind of person I really am. So basically, like, coming, and this is why this has been like I've put a lot of effort into this election so far. I mean, maybe you've seen like the flyers out and everything, and I've tried to talk to a lot of people, and I've really made an effort to go out during club endorsements and say what I believe and make sure they know that I know what I'm talking about. And that's because I don't have those like long-standing political connections. So, and yeah, any time other than now, I don't think I would have even considered running, even if I was here another year and I was going to be. And I had all this experience now, and then it was the end of the year. I probably still wouldn't run if I was, because I just have no interest in going through that whole 
process where everybody makes promises to each other. Everybody, you have to get a whole group of people together, seven people on your ticket. And you kind of, you, a lot of times they bring in people that they don't necessarily like or want to deal with because they'll bring votes in or something like that. And that's not something I really care to spend my time on. This is just, I've worked so hard this year over the summer and like in the first few months, like the first month of school here to make sure the student association stays on track with what it's been doing that I feel like I'm the only person right now who can really take over and make sure it continues in the right direction and kind of stabilize the year out. That's the biggest thing. Like, if I came in, if I didn't work over the summer, I probably wouldn't be running right now either because I wouldn't, I don't think I would care enough. But I've, like, I'm so invested in it at this point that I really want to make sure that this year goes smoothly, I mean, for the student association, for the clubs, and for the students. You, you talk about, about being qualified and your work this summer. Can you kind of tell us, you might have already touched on it a little bit, but can you kind of talk about what you did to get you, yeah. to, oh. tran tr to transition you into being ready? Um, so I started out in the finance department. I was there for about a month, beginning of the summer, and that's like closing out all the POs, anything that's outstanding, making sure we get invoices and statements in from any companies who have outstanding debts or balances with us. Um, also, that's club budget adjustments, so going through all the final things, co-sponsorships, any revenue the clubs have brought in at the end of the year making sure that gets appropriated correctly through an EPC meeting. Um, after that, I went over kind of the student, the club, uh, the club services section. I went through and I scanned every single club constitution, current and prior, from every club that we have on file right now, and then also made a digitized database of all the former e-board members of the clubs. So that kind of gave me a good exposure to like all the different clubs that we have, what their purposes are, who is actually involved in them. Um, went on from there to help Lyle with uh, the staff or the club fair orientation, actually freshman orientation. I actually made the essay video for it, so I took, that took like a week. I got I had to teach myself how to use um, Adobe Premiere to do that because we didn't have anybody on staff in UBTV or anything. And I like I was like, what are we going to show them a PowerPoint presentation? We have so much cool footage and we have so many things that we've done. It'd be a shame to kind of like show the freshmen something half-assed. We should really make sure that it's quality and they see that when they come in. Um, after that, we, I worked hard on event staff, so my role as event staff manager, I sent out all these forms and applications via UB Link to clubs to make sure they sign up to work for a Real Big Fish concert. Um, started to get ready, I came, I actually was gone the week before school started, oh no, two weeks before school started, because I came back that Monday and Tuesday and there were a lot of loose ends still with staff orientation, so I spent a lot of time those two days making sure all the club handbooks were ready, making sure all the travel arrangements were correct. We kind of sat down at a big conference room meeting when Obama said he was coming, we had to kind of figure out a way so that, because Student Life offered all the SA staff tickets, we kind of wanted to make sure that they could utilize those. We didn't want to say, well, like, too bad you're in Canada and deprive them of the opportunity to see the most powerful man in the world speak at UB. So that was, I mean, that's just kind of like a brief thing of the stuff that I've worked on, some of the projects I've been a part of this summer. Huh? Senator, um, you touched on this on Thursday in the debate, but what, how do you see the relationship between you and the faculty? Um, so the only reason I think you, like it seems like we have a bad relationship, the SA and the Spectrum, is because when the SA makes mistakes, and sometimes they're pretty big mistakes, you guys call us out on that, and you're not wrong. You have every right to do that. Um, I'm happy to tell you, I mean, I'm pretty much happy to tell you guys whatever I can contractually tell you if I were elected president. There's no reason we have to like hide behind a curtain and be like, oh great, I gotta go talk to the Spectrum. You seem like nice people, and if I'm like open with you, I think like you'll be fair. I would expect you to be fair as journalists. So, and I think, I don't know, I, from what I've seen, Lyle's been pretty good about that these last few weeks, too, being open with you guys, saying what's going on and everything, and I have no problem continuing that. Um, so we've gotten a lot about your experience, you know, what your platform is, what you hope to do as SA president, um, but I want to hear what you have to say about your opponents. Um, what distinguishes your campaign from your opponents, and why are you better than them to be president? Um, experience and qualification. I mean... Really, uh, like, and let me preface it with this. They're all really nice people. And, like, I was friends with Mo last year. We both worked at the front desk. Um, the other ones that I've met so far, Jess especially, she came out to the debate the other day. Really nice girl. They're all really nice people, but they just don't have the experience and the knowledge of the Student Association right now to back up what they're saying they're going to do or just what they say they want to do in the first place. They, they don't know a lot of the internal structure of how it runs. They don't know a lot of things that have been going on this year to date. Um, and that's really important, especially with a special election like this. You don't have, the summer is like the learning curve. The summer is when you sit down with the pro staff, you sit down, you meet with all the administrators at UB, you kind of get to know everybody and you get a feel for what exactly you have to do throughout the year. That time is gone. There's no time for a learning curve now. You need somebody, the, the, the student association needs somebody who can jump in right away and just kind of take the reins and make sure there's some continuity with the year. So, I mean, in a nutshell, that's... If anyone has one, let's do one last question.
Uh, in terms of the buses, uh, you talk about, you know, wh what would you say to the, someone like me who has never needed a bus or a cab um, to transport to an airport, uh, all the commuters that you be, and the people who, you know, would never really need that transportation to go uh, to the airport or ride home or anything. Um, so that money isn't really affecting that demographic of people. What would you say to that? Um, I would really encourage them to come up to the third floor uh, at Student Union here, take a look at our club list, go through anything that they're interested in, get involved in a club. I mean, if you don't think that if Fest isn't right for you, if the cab service isn't right for you, if the buses aren't right for you, um, please, like, come check out our club list. We have so many different things that are available to students. I mean, I think we have over 140 clubs right now on our club list between the six councils and the temp clubs we have. Just come up and look for a way to get involved. I mean, the, it, it bothers me to think that students don't care. And that's, that's the one thing that I hear a lot of, especially when, like, campaigning or something, if you're talking to somebody in the union, like, when they're voting. People look at you and you'd be like, oh, 94 75 you pay it every semester. This is the person who decides where that money goes. And they go, I don't care. And they just keep walking. And it's like, that's the, I would rather somebody tell me, oh, I'm going to vote for Mo or I'm going to vote for Jess, rather than them telling me that they don't care and they don't want to vote. That, like, that really bothers me because that it's their money or their parents money or the, or the loan money or whatever it is but it's at the end of the day it's their money that they're paying and these are services that we're trying to provide to them and help them so I mean no matter how like whether you don't use any of those services at all that's up to them but I really encourage people to come get involved if you don't like any of those other programs I've suggested I mean just look at the club list see if there's something you can involved with there okay thank you sir yeah no